here's the motherfucking T on the Clone Wars Episode 10, The Phantom Apprentice. Clone review. And let me just say, this is my favorite episode so far. 100%. Everything I was hoping for. Oh my god. What a what a class episode. So let's uh let's talk about that. So it starts where we left off. Ahsoka surrounded by Mordalorians. Maul asking her why is she there? You know, Maul and Ahsoka they have a nice little chat. Yeah, little chimwank, you know. Two two buds cash it up, you know. It's not like they've never met each other before. So while they're having a little you know, chat, you know, Maul's talking to Ahsoka about alluding to some sort of moment that is upon them. As this is going on, Maul alerts Rex and the remaining Fire First troops with him. As to where they are, so Rex Rex takes his, takes his boys and goes into a uh, find Ahsoka, tracking her signal. As these are running to find Ahsoka, Maul's like, maybe the time is already upon us, or something to that extent. And he talks about how he wants Kenobi and Skywalker instead of Ahsoka. He wanted them to come to Mandalore. But obviously they had to go and save the Chancellor, so that never happened and now Ahsoka's there. So Maul's plan ain't going to plan, if that makes sense. Maul knows something is about to happen. And he tells Ahsoka of Darth Sidious. Maul knows what's about to happen. Maul knows what's about to go down. He's seen the films. He knows what's happening. He tells Ahsoka about how Sidious is about to take control. He's about to become the controlling power of the galaxy. We obviously know this as the Galactic Empire. He's been having these visions of what's to come. The dark side has grew in power. Everything hangs in the balance of this small time frame. This episode takes part during episode 3. We get confirmation from everyone a bit later on. Then Rex busts in, kills a couple Mandalorians, and they uh, free Ahsoka. There's a tiny little duel between the two. Nothing much. Keep us waiting for the big duel. But more breaks it off. Telling Ahsoka, not yet. And then he fucking runs away with the Mandalorians. Now Ahsoka and Rex give chase, but they lose Maul. So they've lost him. They don't know where he's gone. He's still in the sewer somewhere. This then cuts to an, uh, a little uh, meeting, I guess, or briefing with Obi-Wan, Bo-Katan, Rex, and Ahsoka. Obi-Wan's obviously there in hologram form. He, he's not, he wasn't really on Mandalore. We know he's on Coruscant right now. We saw that in the film. Well, they're talking, you know. bo wants more clone forces to come and help in this war quicker. But everyone's hands are tied. He can't send them because something much more... A very pivotal moment during the war. So they can't really spare any clone forces to go help the Mandalorians when that's not really needed, essentially. So he's not allowed to send more clone forces to reinforce the Mandalorians, unfortunately. So he asks Kenobi about this Sidious name that Maul told her about. Now, Kenobi's a bit... He's a bit concerned. He's like, ah, shit... I can tell you what the Jedi Council suspects, and that is that Sidious is the power behind this war. He's the one controlling the Clone Wars. Now this is interesting, as the Jedi do know that there is a power behind this, but they are still pawns in the war. They can't really do anything. They don't know who this Sidious is, they can't go and confront him yet. So they just have to play in this war. They just have to play their part. Kenobi reveals that he first heard Sidious from Dooku, as we saw on Geonosis. He reveals that Anakin killed Dooku. And Ahsoka's shocked. She's like, oh shit. But she doesn't dwell on that. She's basically, she's just like, well, if, I, if you want me to capture more, I need more forces. But obviously, Kenobi can't send any. So she then asks, why can't Anakin come? Because obviously they've saved the Chancellor by this point. Everyone's told them that Dooku was killed while they were rescuing the Chancellor. So Ahsoka's like, why can't Anakin come? So he privately tells Ahsoka that Anakin's on a mission to watch the Chancellor. We also see this in the movie. He's spying on the Chancellor. Now, Ahsoka doesn't really agree with this because she doesn't see the Chancellor as, like, an evil power. She sees him as, you know, the benevolent ruler of the Galactic Republic. But due to him extending his term, the Council have sent Anakin to watch over him. Now, Ahsoka knows that the Chancellor has been a good friend to Anakin, so that he won't be happy about this mission. And so, and everyone tries to get Ahsoka to talk to him. But as she's about to, dun -dun -dun -dun, there was an attack. Not on them, but on a clone force looking for more. This is the clip we see them post on their YouTube channel, where Ahsoka talks to Clone Trooper Sterling, and he tells them that Maul cut through the clones and took Jesse, knowing that he was the oldest trooper there on the, on the YouTube channel. So we, we knew that it was coming. We see it, you know, clone forces have been decimated by Maul and his guerrilla warfare. We see 
Maul, Saxon, Rook, and Jesse in a similar place to where Ahsoka was. Jesse keeps resisting Maul, saying he won't tell him anything. They can't get any information out of him. You know, he's an arc trooper. He's been trained to resist torture, I believe. I may be remembering that wrong. But I do believe they're trained to be very strong-minded. Maul alludes to this plan, saying, well, the plan of the clones, like the plan. This war is, is nothing. It's the plan. Order 66. Maul knows that the clones are involved in this somehow. He sends Saxon to make sure Prime Minister Almec doesn't talk to the Republic forces, giving away Maul's, well, whatever, his plan, really. His information. Maul then uses his mind trick ability to look inside the mind of Jesse for any information he has on Ahsoka. Now, we don't know why Maul does this, but we can assume it's so he can manipulate her, as we see on see later on in the episode. As this is happening, Rex... Ahsoka and bo go to Prime Minister Almec, who's in prison. You know, the, the prison we've seen a lot. I think he's in the same cell as well that Maul and Savage Press were in. Could be wrong. It looks very similar. They all look very similar, though, to be fair. But yeah, they go to Prime Minister Almec and ask him for whatever Maul's plan is. How does he plan to escape? Prime Minister Almec reveals that he doesn't. he's not escaping. He doesn't feel like he has to escape. Obviously, he's been plagued by a sense of dread for the past couple months. Ahsoka asks Almec if he's mentioned Sidious, and Almec can't recall if he has. He hasn't mentioned Sidious to Almec. He's about to tell them who Maul wanted to come to Mandalore. He says Kenobi. And then, then as he's about to say the second name, he gets shot by Saxon. But as he's dying, he manages to tell Ahsoka that he wanted Skywalker. So bo and the Mandalorians give chase to Saxon, trying to capture him. Um, bo and... Saxon have a little, a little scuffle on these two uh, lifts and uh, Bo-Katan's about to get crushed by a lift but she manages to slow its descent with her jetpack managing to save herself while Saxon gets away. As Saxon returns we see Maul talking to the Shadow Collective and the Syndicate leaders and uh, we find out that he's told them to go into hiding and we actually see, see Dryden Voss, you know, the man from Solar. There's been a lot of Solar references in this episode, it's, it's, it's the season shall I say. Uh, there's the Ahsoka arc, which has a lot of solo references, and then there's this one where we actually see Dryden Vosh and the Shadow Collective, obviously Maul, being in control of them. After he tells them to go into hiding, um, Maul begins to give a rousing speech to the Mandalorians, appealing to their warrior culture, saying they will die on the battlefield as warriors. So we cut to the clones um, escorting the Mandalorian populace into special safe zones for the uh, upcoming battle. The Mandalorians, they aren't happy about taking orders from clones. They don't want to, but it's just a sad reality, really. And bo says, like, come on, we got to leave soon. I won't stand for these clone forces being on Mandalore any longer than they have to be. And Ahsoka explains, like, yeah, as soon as we get more, we'll be gone. And then they, as they're walking into the palace, we see Maul there just chilling on the throne. <laughs> He's just like, yep, what's, what's popping? At this point, Bo rushes in, blasting at him, but he manages to just send the bullets side they don't hit him it looks a very cool looking scene he like, kind of makes them bendy in a way it's pretty cool he tells her that that's not the way to treat her rightful ruler he gives jesse back to rex and rex takes him you know getting him out of the way of maul in case anything does go south so that takes rex out of the picture we know rex is going to survive Way. Hey. and then the maul deloreans attack we see lots of explosions from inside the palace and Maul's like, oh, one of you should go take care of that. So bo she you know, she's, she goes to lead her Mandalorians into battle to hopefully end the Siege of Mandalore. This leaves Maul and Ahsoka. As the battle commences, we see the two forces clashing together, and we do see that, as a matter of fact, the clones are outmatched by the Mandalorians, even in this short little bit we get. We see the clones getting pretty, pretty destroyed already. We get the impression that the clones aren't as effective as these Mandalorians will be. Maul talks to Ahsoka and he goes on to um, explain what he's been seeing in his visions. We get this scene. The scene I've been waiting for since it was shown. As you can tell by the fact it's my desktop background. I think I'll get a new one. Because there's some sick scenes in this episode that I want as a wallpaper. So uh, we'll see. Maul knows there's going to be a change in the power of the, the galaxy. He knows that one entity is going to take control of the galaxy. He knows what's coming. He's foreseen it. 
and he says that Sidious is behind this power and he will make himself known in a short while. We obviously know what's going to happen, so does Maul. He says the time of the Jedi has passed and they've outstayed their welcome. He knows they're going to be destroyed very soon. Order 66 is close. I do believe we'll see it next episode. I thought it happened episode 4, but I do feel like it's going to happen in episode 3. Just how they set up this episode, I'm getting serious Order 66 vibes. Because Kenobi's going to Utapau. Anakin is spying on the Chancellor. Those are two things that were happening as Order 66 was called. Well, just before Order 66 was called. Obi-Wan was still on Utapau as Order 66, was, Order 66 was called. So it might happen towards the tail end of episode 3. Well, the third part of this arc. Maul wants him and Ahsoka to team up that, so that they can defeat Sidious. I know. Strange. I believe he'd probably ask Obi-Wan the same thing. And maybe Anakin. If they were there, he'd probably ask them to team up. As Maul has said to Ahsoka that you know he wants them to team up, He, she actually, after a bit of, bit of thought, you know, she's like, yeah, well, you know what? I will help you. But please answer this one question. So Maul's like, yeah, of course. Wh whatever, just ask the question. So she asks, what does Maul want with Anakin? And this is where we see uh, the true extent of Maul's knowledge really show here. He is the key, Maul says. Now Ahsoka takes this to mean that he will bring the balance to the Force, but Ma Maul reveals it. No, he will destroy the Force. He tells Ahsoka that Anakin has been groomed, both by Padme, he doesn't say by Padme, <laughs> but by Sidious. To be his new apprentice, the golden child, it will, if it were, and that Maul orchestrated this entire battle of Mandalore in the hopes that he could get Kenobi and Skywalker, so that he could kill Skywalker and deprive Sidious of this apprentice that he so desires. Maul's, Maul's kind of the good guy in all of this. He's trying to stop it. Well, he knows he can't stop it, but he's trying to. He wanted to delay it. He, he wanted to kill Anakin, really, but we we all know that probably wouldn't have happened. Anakin is a very strong Jedi, much stronger than Maul is. So, either way, Anakin would have fallen to the dark side, I believe. Now, Ahsoka, of course, doesn't believe him, you know. She knows Anakin. She doesn't think he would turn to the dark side. And at this moment, I don't think his fall is, you know, it's, it's not complete. So, she may have been right at that moment in time that Anakin wouldn't turn to the dark side. But as we know, he do. The duel between Lady Tarno and Darth Maul is about to happen. Well, I guess he's just called Maul now, but still. The duel is about to go down. This is something I've been waiting for the entire season. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint at all. Maul's, I mean, we know Maul, he's a very skilled duelist. He's, he was a Sith assassin, after all. He's very good at killing Jedi. You know, he killed Qui-Gon. Uh, did get chopped off by Kenobi, but survived and went on to kill a couple more Jedi with his brother Savage Press, and then took control of Mandalore, and really, yeah, just pretty strong boy. He also fought Grievous and Count Dooku and survived to tell the tale, so, you know, pretty epic. But she manages to hold her own against Maul. She's she's become a skilled duelist, we, we know that. She even holds her own when she's only using the short-bladed Shoto that she has, which is pretty good skill. She says that Maul wouldn't have lasted long against Anakin. I, I told the same sentiments, really. But he then's like, you have the arrogance of Kenobi. Oh, such a good scene. Like, that bit of communication between the two, I physically was like, ha oh, that is sick. I was like, yes. Yes, lads, get in. Meanwhile, we see the clones are getting destroyed until bo and her Mandalorians bust in and turn the tide of the battle. Maul is about to overwhelm Ahsoka, but she manages to push him out of a window. She takes a breather. This battle has been very intense for her, and then she follows him. Now instead of the two continuing, Maul decides to run away. As he does, you know, he's hard to kill after all. But as he's doing this, we see that the Death the Death Watch, I guess, and the lead of bo -Katan. they're not really called Death Watch anymore, but that is essentially what they were. So they are beating, along with the clones, beating Maul's forces. Um, yeah, they've forced them to surrender. Jackson asks Maul for more reinforcements, but he's just like, no. Die well, Mandalorian. He's he's done with the Mandalorians. He don't he don't need them. He's letting them die. And then we see Ahsoka behind him. As Maul's in the rafters above Mandalore. Above the city of Sundari, I guess. Kenobi was right. Everyone was right. 
you are difficult to kill. <laughs> now that seems like, oh, good one, Ahsoka. They begin a, their duel in the rafters with Sundari. Now, balance plays a huge part in this, as they are only thin beams. And uh, quite a couple of times in the duel, both people kind of almost lose their balance, but they regain it, you know. They're athletic Jedi. Of course they're going to regain their balance. And this was my favourite scene of the entire season by far. It looks so sick. It's, ooh, I'm going to pick a scene from that to be my new wallpaper, 100%. And then Maul's ship appears, and as he's kind of knocked Ahsoka back, he prepares to leave. He breaks the glass as he's about to leave the city, but Ahsoka stops him once again. The ship is just chilling, and they ha they re they, re they, re they restart their duel. Now, during this second part of the fight in the rafters, uh, Maul manages to disarm Ahsoka of both her normal lightsaber first, forcing her to rely on her Shoto, and then disarming her of that too. Now, despite being disarmed, Ahsoka is still ready to put up a little bit of a fight. You know, she's getting to a little, uh, little bat bat. You know, even though Maul has a lightsaber. She's mad. She really, she's really, con she's really, uh, really wants to catch this man's. <laughs> kind of slices the rafter she's on. It causes it to bow a bit, and then he fucking jumps over and then makes it bow even more. He asks her again, "Join me." And she says no. So Maul is prepared to kill her. He starts swinging his lightsaber at her, so he manages to dodge. And she manages to finesse him by grabbing his hilt, yeeting him around her, and he begins to fall. But she catches him, and Maul's like, Oh, let me die, let me die, you're all part of this! You don't know what you're doing! But they manage to subdue Maul, and uh, Captain Rick stuns him, and they take him aboard the gunship. They've done it. And so he goes, Captured Maul, and the Siege Mandalore is almost over. But the ship that was there to get more is, 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 is disappeared, it's gone. We see Ahsoka staring for this hole. It's the final scene, and it looks amazing. But she's got Maul into custody. Well done. Now, I want to talk about episodes well, part 3 and part 4 of this arc. I feel like Maul is going to help Ahsoka escape Order 66. Because she doesn't have her lightsabers now. She might pick them up next episode, possibly. As of now, she's without her lightsabers. And we know that Maul also escapes, so I feel that those two are going to do a little team-up. Now, there's two things. They might either do a little team-up to save each other, and then they part ways. Or, during the chaos, Maul manages to escape, which is also likely. I would prefer to see the second one, but that wouldn't really explain why they are still like kind of cold towards one another in Rebels. Although, it might also work. Tell me what you think. I'm I'm very fucking excited for part three and part four. Holy shit. That's going to be so, so sick. Oh my god. We know the episodes... Well, I hope episode four is double the length of the regular episodes. Because that would be sick. And a 40 minute episode to end off the season? Holy shit, that means sick. But if part three is also 40 minutes? Mad. They're going to spoil us with content. Holy shit. I cannot wait. I don't want the Clone Wars to end, but at the same time, I can't wait to see how it concludes on the show. It's going to be sick. I really don't want to see Order 66 again. I don't want to see Ayla Secure die. I don't want to see Kaidi Moody die. Oh, God. But in the event that they do show Order 66, I hope it's footage we haven't seen before. I hope it's new Jedi getting confirmed to have survived, you know? Maybe we see Luminar and Dooley's capture. Because that was a that was in Rebels, but we never saw that like on screen. Maybe we see Caleb Doom and Death Balaba fighting clones. Who knows? I know we'll see how Ahsoka deals with the 66, but I don't know if it will show other Jedi dealing with it. But we will soon see. Man, I'm excited. <laughs> it's gonna be sick. Anyway, how, what did you think of the episode? Did you like it? What do you think is gonna happen? Both Maul and Ahsoka and Order 66. Tell me down below if you want, obviously. Um, and yeah, thanks for the mad support on the channel recently. It's been insane. I know TF2 had a bit of a issue, but that has been resolved. So that's all good. Subscribe for the unusual giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. Should we hit that milestone? And yeah, I shall see you guys in the next video. Hey, oh, uh, uh, I've been up for like two hours. Two hours. Yo, bitch can food took a few showers. Few showers. I don't buy my just money dance. Yeah. That wristwatch costs a hundred grand.